Well, hello everyone. This is uh, Chris back again for another discussion. Uh, today, or now, should I say, I'm going to talk about uh, Charles Law. As you can see, I'm kind of ticking them, ticking off the list of uh, the major gas laws that we run into uh, in the sciences, particularly respiratory therapy. So, the next law I'm going to talk about is something called Charles Law. <clears throat> now, Charles Law takes into consideration two variables: volume and temperature. So. Volume, one, to temperature. So what do you think Charles' law assumes remains constant and unchanging? Well, in this case, the, only, the, the third thing that gets left out is pressure. So, again, it's very important that if you get a problem regarding a gas law, that you figure out what gas law to use. <clears throat> And that is one of the ways you can figure it out is go, okay, well, Charles' Law talks about volume and temperature and uh, leaves pressure out. And if I have a question that's asking about how a pressure changes, then I know that Charles' Law will not be the appropriate law to apply. Because, again, all these gas laws really assume a very specific set of circumstances in a vacuum. And, and as we know, in the real world, real life is not doesn't occur in a vacuum, and there are lots of things occurring at once. So that's why these gas laws are, are, are very general and are, are, in some cases, kind of gross approximations of what occur in real life because we have so many variables. Um, but really, to properly work these, these guys through, we have to assume... Uh, certain boundary conditions, put in certain boundary conditions, if you will, and just assume that there are certain unchanging variables, so we kind of kind of have to make believe a little bit. But in spite of that, these gas laws still are a pretty good, a pretty good representation of, of what really occurs um, in the natural world. Okay, so they look at volume, temperature, pressure. So the way that I like to think about it is, we had Boyle's balloon, I think of Charles... Celsius because Charles law is involving how volume changing with temperature so I think of Charles Celsius Charles law Charles Celsius okay so we have our general formula in this case um, it looks a little different we have a division so we have a numerator and a denominator and it says V1 divided by T1 equals V2 divided by T2. So again, I have two different conditions. I have condition A here, and then something changes. The volume changes, the temperature changes, what have you, and we have a different condition, and that would become condition B. Now, I'm kind of a multiplication kind of guy, and I, I like to work with multiplying. Um, so there's another way we can rearrange this formula, and I'll just show it to you, and you guys can kind of just cherry pick. And, and really, I, I think in most cases, as long as you get the right answer, I don't think uh, many people, unless you're in, in grade school, high school, because they're, they're very uh, concerned about mathematical formalism, but we know in the real world, if you can get the job done, you can get it job done right and consistently, does it really matter what arrangement of a formula you use? And in my mind, no, I don't think so. Uh, so we know that from just basic arithmetic, <coughs> uh, treating these like fractions, what we can do is we can cross multiply these and get this, uh, a formula that will give us this exact same answer. So if I cross multiply, I'll draw my little arrows here, my formula is going to look something like this. V1 times T2 equals T1 times V2. Okay? So, V1 times T2 equals T1 times V2. So, a 1 and a 2, a 1 and a 2. That's if I cross multiply them and rearrange it. It doesn't matter if I use this one or this one. It's the exact same formula. I have just, um, <clears throat> I have just um, arithmet uh, used arithmetic, uh, just algebraically, if you will, rearranged the formula. 
exact same formula. I've just rearranged it. Whatever's easiest for you guys. Uh, typically, I, I like to multiply. Um, but again, you know, this is nothing but um, the the division up here cross multiplied. So again, don't don't you know don't uh, get too wrapped up in the formalism. Whatever intuitively makes more sense to you guys, go ahead and use it. Okay, so basically what does this formula tell us? What this formula tells us is that as my temperature increases, so if my temp increases, my volume will subsequently do what? Well, it will increase. And a lot of these gas laws are pretty intuitive, I think. Even Boyle's law is fairly intuitive if you think about the balloon um, analogy. A balloon flying up in the air is going to get bigger. So increased temp means increased volume. Likewise, <clears throat> if my temperature decreases, what's going to happen to my volume? Well, my volume is going to decrease. And I, I think that should intuitively make sense. We've all seen those, those uh, movies uh, people taking um, balloons and putting them in uh, vats of, of liquid nitrogen. We know that liquid nitrogen is exceedingly cold and those balloons really shrink down. Then you take that balloon out, you put it in room air and you know, and several seconds later as, it, as the gas warms up, it expands and increases in volume. So really, Charles Law should intuitively make a lot of sense. It's, I think just the mathematics is where kind of people get um, kind of get wrapped up in, in the math and, and a little confused. Or when it comes test time, you just kind of forget which formula does what. So let me go ahead and I'm just going to give you guys a little uh, scenario here. <clears throat> and this is actually a, a scenario that I had to do oh, a while back in chemistry. Uh, so there's a little uh, blatant plagiarism here. <laughs> um, this, it, this actually comes from the, um, the notes of a general chemistry class I did. I believe the name of the book was um, uh, Integrated uh, Chemistry or uh, uh, Integrated Chemistry um, General Organic and Biochem. Um, it was the Raymond book, uh, the newest version as of uh, 2009. Uh, it was uh, uh, the the Chem 110, 111 course uh, taught at uh, Doniana Community College in Las Cruces. Uh, so. Uh, just so I can get that source out there and not blatantly plagiarize it. So, the problem I'm going to give you guys is this. I'm going to say, okay, temperature outside is about 32 degrees Celsius. 32 degrees C. And I'm going to use Celsius uh, not uh, because really that's what most people in the world use, is Celsius. And uh, uh, I think it's important that we kind of look at how other um, people in other places in the world uh, use temperature because we're one of the few countries that doesn't use Celsius and we really should get used to using Celsius, especially if you're in healthcare. So I'm going to kind of stick with that Celsius. Uh, so I do apologize for people that are used to Fahrenheit, uh, but really Celsius is, is rather prolific, especially in medicine. So it's 32 degrees Celsius and I have a balloon. I'm going to draw a little balloon here. And inside of that balloon, I have a volume of 2.5 liters. So this is, we'll say, condition A here. And this is exactly kind of how I think about it, is I just divide it into different conditions. Okay, this is condition A. And now what's, what's condition B? And then it's just a matter of plugging the numbers in. I get it right every time. So condition B is, well, I'm going to take that because 32 degrees Celsius is pretty warm, right? We know 37 degrees Celsius body temperature. That's about 98.7 degrees um, Fahrenheit. So 32 degrees is fairly warm. It's a fairly warm day. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring that balloon inside my house. It's nice and cool. It's air conditioned in the 70s. And we'll say it's about 24 degrees Celsius inside. I have that balloon. And what I want to know is... What is the new volume in that balloon? Does it change? What will be the new volume in that balloon? All right. 
So this is what we need to do. We need to think about it. This is condition A. It was originally outside. Now it's inside. So what I have here is I have temperature 1, temperature 2, volume 1, volume 2. Now, do not get fooled by this temperature here. I remember what I said in the ideal gas law video is we need to make sure that we convert Celsius into Kelvin. Because that's what we use for most of our temperatures in, in calculating gas laws is we need to go with Kelvin. Of course, Kelvin being the scale of absolute zero, um, named after Lord Kelvin, where zero is the theoretical absolute zero. Um, and 273 just happens to be zero degrees Celsius. So a handy formula to throw is if I want to um, convert from Celsius to Kelvin, all I do is I add 273 to my Celsius, and that gives me my degrees Kelvin. So 32 degrees becomes 305K. 24 degrees Celsius becomes 297K. Now, <clears throat> at this point, it's simply a matter of plugging the numbers in. So we'll plug them in up here. V1, remember, same, same volume. I'm going to use liters, so I need to use liters over here. So volume 1 is 2.5. Okay, temperature 1 is 305. Likewise, volume 1, 2.5. Temperature 2, I'll circle that for down here. Temperature 2, or temperature 1 rather, is 305K. Okay, I go over here. Temperature 2 is 297. So 297 here, 297 here. So what does that leave me with? Well, that leaves me with V2. I need to find V2. Well, how do I do that? Well, I can either do it one of two ways. If I do it this way, which is the way that's commonly taught, even though I prefer this way, let's just stick with this way here. So I'll go out of my comfort zone here a little bit. All right, so. 297, 2.5 liters, V2 is X liters, so we don't know that one. And then uh, temperature one was 305K. Okay, so how do I solve this? Well, the way I solve it is I just cross multiply it, right? <clears throat> uh, so I go 2.5 liters times 297K equals 305k times x. I don't know. Okay, so what do I do? I multiply these. 2.5 times 297. Get a number. What do I have to do over here? I need to isolate x. Get it by itself. So I need to divide by 305. And then I divide by 305 here. x is all by itself. And then all I do is I go 2.5 times 297 divided by 305 equals what? Do the math, and it comes out to be about 2.4 liters. And then I always ask myself when I'm done with the question, does it intuitively make sense? What happened? Condition A was outside when it was hot, and it went inside where it's cooler, so I would expect the volume in the balloon to decrease. And then I look at the answer and I go, is this lower than the initial volume? In this case it is. I started with 2.5, the balloon got cooler, and the volume decreased to 2.4 liters. So it intuitively makes sense, uh, therefore I have warm fuzzies about that being the right answer. I put it down, I get 100%, and I go on to graduate. All right, guys, hopefully uh, you found that uh, intuitive and educational. We'll see you next time.